Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So Michael Branch here bringing this to our attention. Now the World Bank is claiming that the global economy will suffer a recession next year. So brace yourselves guys for 2023. The Federal Reserve released minutes from the September FOMC meeting. The Federal Open Market Committee is responsible for monetary policy making in the US. And in a chilling statement, the Fed states that the cost of doing too little to fight inflation outweighs the cost of doing too much. So here's why the Fed will remain hawkish. The crypto market is dependent on macroeconomic factors. However, the Federal Reserve's hawkish stance is impacting the crypto market more than anything else. The Fed is engaging in interest rate heights and quantitative tightening to curb soaring inflation levels. Uh, the central bank decided on four consecutive interest rate heights. So talking just a little bit about what they have done. Uh, the drawback of the Fed's hawkish stance is the global economic slowdown. So the World Bank, guys, is claiming that the global economy will suffer a recession in 2023. Similarly, the UN asks central banks to pivot from their hawkish stance to prevent an impending recession. Moreover, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon stated yesterday that the economy will face a recession in six to nine months. So everybody giving their predictions. Um, coincidentally, I don't know if you guys heard about the uh, Kanye West story. JP Morgan just kind of out of the blue decided to shut down his bank account. I had a tab up here. I, th I was going to talk about it, but then I thought, you know, it doesn't really fit in uh, to today's video. Bizarre. I mean, he's a big celebrity and, uh, you know, he has an empire, millions upon millions of dollars. And JP Morgan just out of the blue decides, no, nope, you've got till the end of November. Anyway, I'm going a little off topic here, but I guess along the lines of the corruption, so we'll try to bring it back on topic here. The banking cartel in the United States want things done their way. And uh, recently, Kanye West uh, did an interview with Tucker Carlson and uh, dropped some pretty big bombs. You guys can probably find it on YouTube. So back to the recession, though, we've got big banking heads uh, agreeing, you know, six to nine months. The outlook for the economy is not looking great. Moreover, Elon Musk and Kathy Wood state that the U.S. economy is on the verge of deflation. Deflation is a period when the prices of commodities and services go down. So they are saying the opposite. Many experts also believe that the economy is staring stagflation. Stagflation is probably the worst possible outcome for the Fed's stance. While some marketplace participants hoped that the Fed may pivot due to the threats for global financial instability, the Fed clearly believes that it will prefer overdoing its restrictive policymaking than pivoting too early. So to the economy, guys, the S&P 500 here on the weekly uh, you guys can see this uh, this week is uh, coming to a close soon. Today is Thursday, October the 13th. And, uh, you know, it's not looking too promising. This was the level of support uh, that we came down into in mid-June. And uh, as you guys can see, again, this is the weekly uh, time frame. You guys can see it is not looking too positive for the S&P 500, throwing that on the daily. Uh, just to kind of give you guys a sense of where the daily candlesticks are. Um, I was saying the other day, yesterday I think it was, that, uh, well, you know, if we wick down and, and bounce back up, that could be good. But it doesn't look like this is holding. Not at all. And, you know, even uh, in that article, they were talking about cryptocurrency. Yesterday, we did see a price decline for XRP. Right now, XRP is trading at about 45 cents. 45.2. Bringing up the Bitcoin chart real quickly here. Bitcoin is trading at uh, 18.6 or 18.7, give or take. So Bitcoin still hovering in this uh, in this level of support down in here. I mean, it'll get really interesting if Bitcoin goes below this level here at about 17.5. I am hoping we do not see that. Uh, not something we want to see. Low volume though, so not a lot of trading activity over the last several months. But here's something I'm actually quite optimistic about, guys. Matthew LANY brought this to our attention. Cross-border demands banks to get ready for clearing 2.0, i.e., clearing on the blockchain or using distributed ledger technology. So this is an article uh, put out by Payments just posted today, October the 13th. And they're saying as real-time payment networks operate across the globe, Fed now in the US and the Faster Payments Task Force in the UK, to name just two examples, those systems still need to communicate with one another as payments cross borders. Data needs to flow in real time across currencies and time zones. So notice Fed now, Ripple enabled, and uh, Ripple also part of the Faster Payments Task Force as well. No matter the transaction size or the senders or recipients, commercial or consumer, banks will still be the trusted intermediaries to make that happen. So this article clearly making a case for the big banks. Banks are not going anywhere, you know, in and amongst this crypto confusion that I'm sure a lot of people have, whether they're on Wall Street or 
uh, you know, in the banking sector, wherever in the UK, in Canada, in Europe, um, wherever it is, it's becoming very apparent that, uh, you know, we are going to need a clearing 2.0 clearing on DLT technology, clearing the path for money movements, clearing banks have been a mainstay in cross-border transactions and are needed to improve transactions that flow between accounts associated with various banking networks. So again, just kind of hitting that point home. Let me just go down here though. Wanted to highlight this, okay? Of course, a pivot from the way things have always been done will take some time. So implementing the new financial infrastructure uh, is going to take time. Uh, Sarkissian noted that there might be some technical heavy lifting necessary to combat the frictions inherent in legacy systems and manual processes. Now, obviously, we know uh, RippleNet is going to alleviate some of these pains. Uh, Sarkissian said that there are enough tailwinds in place to spur banks to more fully embrace real-time cross-border transactions. Regulators are sinking to agree on compliance and messaging. The transaction dollar limits are also being raised in many corridors, which will boost transaction volumes. So, um, they need volume, they need liquidity in order to fulfill a lot of this. Security is top of mind as well. One key area that needs to be addressed lies in the KYC, of course, anti-money laundering, know your customer. After all, faster payments can pave the way for faster fraud as well, so obviously they've got to bring that up. Banks will need to examine whether their fraud detection and prevention systems are caught up, but the Clearing 2.0 bank must also be flexible enough to embrace the emergence of new point-to-point -point global networks such as Ripple and XRP, and to settle in whatever currency stakeholders demand. So boom, mentioning Ripple and XRP here as a clearing option. As a clearing bank, you'll need to have the ability to work with whatever rails come in and as fast as they can move money. One key advantage throughout cross-border commerce as RTP networks communicate and interoperate is that the cost of the transfers will decline as transparency and security improve. As parties transact in real time, they won't be as exposed to FX risk. So an entire article here, guys, on Clearing 2.0, actually mentioning Ripple and XRP uh, as an example to settle. We know the banks are already partnered with Ripple. It's almost as if they are letting us know that this is what is going to happen rather than this is what should happen. Interesting. Wanted to thank Matt for pointing that out. Another one, guys, from Matt with regards to South Africa and a very, very recent report that they just released yesterday, October 2022. As you guys can see down here, uh, it was just released yesterday on the 12th. Uh, and this is the Intergovernmental Fintech Working Group. Feedback on the Intergovernmental Fintech Working Group's first regulatory sandbox initiative. And guys, look, they mentioned Zago. Zago tested the regulatory treatment of crypto assets, specifically Ripple's XRP, in terms of the exchange control regulations, promulgated in terms of Section 9 of the Currency and Exchanges Act, used for affecting cross-border transactions between South Africa and the United Kingdom, and vice versa, subject to certain limits prescribed by the relevant authorities and reporting on such transactions to the relevant authorities, and uh, also just mentioning it down here with regards to Mercury FX as well. Mercury tested the regulatory treatment as well as the associated regulatory reporting implications and obligations of crypto assets, specifically XRP, being used for affecting low-value cross-border remittances between South Africa and the United Kingdom and vice versa. So also just uh, mentioning that they are utilizing XRP in this sandbox initiative. Of course, Mercury FX and uh, Zago, two uh, well-established Ripple partners. And so it's great to see that in this uh, most recent report, dated just yesterday, guys, they are still discussing this in the context of the Intergovernmental Fintech Working Group in South Africa, for South Africa specifically. So another great one from Matt, wanted to thank him just for posting that. And the Cryptic Poet here on Twitter mentioning this with regards to more crypto adoption. This one has to do with VeChain. They're confirming plans to expand to Europe and worldwide, guys. Popular public blockchain VeChain has disclosed plans to expand its team in Europe by onboarding more employees to actualize the expansion vision. The economic problem-solving ecosystem is set to recruit over 100 new developers to work in its new branch in Europe. VeChain declares that it is pushing out new tools, technologies, developer libraries, and so on. So as you guys can see, it's not just for cross-border payments. Blockchain is going to change the face of everything. All applications are going to be running on the blockchain. It's going to be the internet of value, as they've dubbed it. According to a news platform, VeChain has opened new facilities in Europe and seeks more talent for a smooth operation. And here's a quote, guys. We've opened a new technology center in Ireland and are hiring 100 plus devs at the moment. So uh, if you guys are Irish and watching the show and uh, maybe have some developing talents, uh, VeChain is hiring. Uh, VeChain has two new facilities in Europe and these facilities are actively hiring and building its team. The company has yet to release the full details on this. However, the team is processing its legal jurisdiction with the government of San Marino uh, to make the platform a registered brand in Europe. So VeChain 
expanding in Europe, guys. This is all great news. I feel like VeChain uh, only a few steps behind Ripple when it comes to expansion. They have so many great partnerships as well. Uh, you know, namely McDonald's in China, Walmart in China. I think a lot of their partnerships originated in China, but they are now expanding, as you guys can see. Europe, their next big target. Of course, ending up regions of the world that are already crypto compliant. And uh, here is the VET token still trading at a discount, two cents, uh, about 0 0.021 right now. Uh, and you guys can see here, let me just pull this down, uh, showing you guys the price range from its high of 28 cents back in the spring of 2021. We are down about 92% on the V chain price. So a very big mover, a high ROI potential for the VET token. And uh, just to get back up to that all time high, we're looking at uh, almost 1200%, yeah, about 1200% in potential gains if you purchase V chain at this moment, of course. This is not financial advice, but you know, looking at how the entire market is depressed right now, this might be another cryptocurrency that you want to have on your radar. And guys, I know you probably saw this yesterday. I'm going to play you this clip if you did not. This posted by Digital Asset Buy on Twitter, and uh, the original video is also down here in YouTube from XRP behind the scenes. Listen to what he has to say here. And guys, we're going to talk about it in the context of what is happening today. Hey, I've got two things that hit me really hard about Bob and I's conversation this morning. Number one, the, he doesn't know anything about XRP. He doesn't know anything about XLM. He, the only thing he knows is that he's meeting with a company called Ripple. Give you a little background on who Bob is. He's a market maker. Those of you who know what market makers are, most of them on the retail level, all create liquidity for the market. They grease the wheel for the bid, ask, and offer market to keep the market moving and flowing. Um, I don't want to get too deep into that, but that's what he does. He does it on a completely different, higher level. He does it <clears throat> not internationally, but he does it on a global liquidity market that is really important to keep the world's economies moving. It's, he would explain it totally different, but I'm trying to keep it in layman's terms here for you guys, for all of us, not just uh, you guys, me as well. <clears throat> he was notified uh, last week that they'd be meeting in a couple of weeks with a company called Ripple. He didn't know anything about Ripple. Like most of us, he thought it was a wine. <laughs> I told him, no, that's the parent company of XRP. He goes, well, I've heard of XRP. I don't know what it does or what it is. I know they're in some kind of lawsuit. I said, yeah, we've talked about that before, Bob. He's like, yeah, okay. What do you, what do you know about what's happening? And he said, well, I know that we're going to provide liquidity for what they said is a new market that they're forming. And I thought, a new market. And he said, yeah, in an entire, in, it's not a retail market. It's more of a public market. I was like, a public market? Wow. Uh, a CBDC? And he said, I don't know what that is exactly. What is that? And I'm like, a central bank digital currency? He said, no, that can't be it. I said, well, why don't you believe that could be it? He said, well, we don't deal with the central banks. I'm like, well, have you dealt with, have you floated liquidity or created liquidity for markets internationally with any kind of digital? Yeah, digital money and this and that. And I said, who'd you do that with? Oh, we only work when we, when we work with a government level, we only provide liquidity for the treasury department. Yeah. <laughs> For who? The Treasury Department, Alan. Why? And I'm like, what do you mean, why? <laughs> do, you, do you have any idea, like, the, like the Treasury Department's going to have their own CBDCs? And he goes, no, I, I don't know that. All I know is I'm, we're meeting with a parent company called Ripple. Well, I don't even know if it's going to be about XRP, but we're meeting with them and we provide liquidities for treasuries. Huh. 
And as you can imagine, my mind exploded. Well, Bob, let me tell you, you are definitely going to be integrating XRP in some kind of capacity if you are indeed having a meeting with Ripple. And if your company deals with liquidity, now let's talk a little bit about this, guys. And what I was gleaning from this, so a few things that uh, this guy says. Well, first of all, this is not a confirmed source. This is some random guy on YouTube telling us a story about his friend uh, who happens to have a meeting with Ripple. So we got to take that for what it's worth. If it is in fact true though, and this Bob guy does work with liquidity and he does work with liquidity when he does work with governments, it is with the treasury. So that is an important connection there. Also talking about this uh, new product, this new liquidity product that Ripple is looking to put out. Obviously it'll utilize XRP, but it sounds as though it is not just for commercial or institutions. It is for a public. It's going to be a public liquidity pool. Something that gets me really interested considering this guy's a market maker, deals with liquidity, going to have a meeting with Ripple soon, going to create what's uh, looking like a public liquidity pool, and also deals with, uh, when he does deal with governments, does deal with the Treasury Department. So all things that make me go, hmm. Lynn Alden also bringing this up. So something that we should be paying attention to uh, in conjunction with this story, how it started versus how it's going a day later. Now, when I saw this, I couldn't believe it, but a lot of people are posting this. U.S. Treasury Secretary, okay? So this is the Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen. Uh, on the 11th, she said, I'm not seeing anything in markets that causes me to be concerned. And then literally a day later on October the 12th, she wrote, I'm concerned about the lost and adequate liquidity in treasuries. So a complete 180 over a 24 hour period. I also happened upon this tweet thread here by Concoda uh, on Twitter, and it's a very, very lengthy thread. I don't uh, have time really to go through all of it. Just wanted to highlight some of the more interesting tweets here. Recent treasury market data from Trace, FINRA's trade reporting and compliance engine, does show trading volume in the treasury market reaching recent highs, just as 10 year yields have fallen back below 4%. So treasury trading volume rises to highest in seven months. Guys, on the heels of that, U.S. Treasury liquidity problem exposes Fed to the biggest nightmare. We are seeing that the Treasury is in trouble here. The latest bout of global financial volatility has heightened concerns about regulators continuing failure to resolve liquidity problems. With U.S. Treasuries, the debt that serves as a benchmark for the world. Okay, so the U.S. Treasury, if they are in trouble, could they be calling upon this gentleman's friend here, Bob? from Wall Street to help fix the problem. Uh, so this article goes on talking about the beer flu and how that's affected the economy. We have seen an appreciable and troubling deterioration in treasury market liquidity, says Krishna Gura, head of the central bank strategy of Evercore ISI. Regulators really haven't delivered any substantial reforms, he said. Uh, what we are seeing at the moment is a reminder that the work is really important. When the Treasury's market broke down amid a panic rush into dollar cash in March of 2020, the Fed swooped in as a buyer of last resort. And while it now has a backstop facility allowing the exchange of Treasuries for cash, volatility is extreme enough, could still force the Fed into action, observers say. That's particularly awkward now when policymakers are not only raising interest rates but actively shrinking the portfolio of Treasuries. So-called quantitative tightening is supposed to be playing an important role in tightening monetary policy as part of the central bank's battle to contain inflation. Okay, I will leave the rest of this in the description of the video for you guys if you want to read further. Another tweet here, guys, from the Concoda tweet thread. And again, uh, I urge you guys to read this thing. It's, it's quite lengthy, but I just wanted to go over this because coincidentally, the Treasury released this. This is their market structure, okay? Giving you guys a sense of how liquidity moves, how trades are formed, Treasury security trading between dealers and clients, 35% of the volume. Treasury securities trading between dealers, 10% of trade volume. Uh, IDBS Act is intermediaries between dealers enabling anonymous trading among participants. Anonymous trading among participants. Gets me thinking, could this have to do with market makers providing that liquidity in order for trading? Could this be public market makers, i.e. you and I, holding XRP, being able to trade our XRP in a public liquidity pool that Bob is allegedly working with Ripple to create for the treasury. All things that make me go, hmm. Also, Janet Yellen from just yesterday, Yellen worries over loss of adequate liquidity in the treasuries specifically. 
So this was the final statement. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen cited concerns about the potential for a breakdown in trading of U.S. Treasuries. So guys, definitely a liquidity crisis as her department leads an effort to shore up the crucial market. We are worried about a loss of adequate liquidity in the market, she said. The balance sheet capacity of broker-dealers to engage in treasury market making hasn't expanded much, while the overall supply of treasuries has climbed. So treasury market making hasn't expanded. So what do you need to expand treasury market making? Well, perhaps a public liquidity pool comprised of XRP holders from the public retail holders that can now trade their XRP when the demand becomes so overwhelming that there is no other solution. Treasury debt outstanding has climbed to about $7 trillion since the end of 2019, but big financial institutions haven't been willing to serve as market makers burdened by the so-called supplementary leverage ratio or SLR, which requires that capital be put against such activity as well as against reserve holdings. Guys, we could be the market makers in this situation. It sounds as though the time is right. Janet Yellen just stated this yesterday. There is a lack of liquidity and also market making hasn't expanded much for the treasury. So what does that ultimately mean, guys? Does it mean XRP will go to the moon based on the supply and demand fundamentals that would allow you and I to be market makers for the treasury. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.